Hi everybody, it's Kara here from Boho Berry and I'm super excited to be back this week. As most of you probably know, I was out in San Francisco last week on a work slash personal mini vacation. So I was a little absent from YouTube, but I'm really happy to be back and I'm happy to bring you this video that has been requested so much lately. And I know that everyone's out there just waiting for, <laughs> waiting for me to film this. So I'm happy to bring this to you today. And this video is all about the Calendex. The Calendex is a hybrid between an index and a calendar. And it's one of the ways I've been using lately to plan out future events and appointments in my bullet journal. So I just wanted to give you a close-up view here of my personal Calendex. And the Calendex system was actually created by a gentleman named Eddie Hope. And I'll post a link uh, below so that you can go directly to his blog post about it. I actually found out about the Calendex system on the bulletjournal.com blog where Ryder featured Eddie Hope's method, the Calendex. And as soon as I saw it, I realized that this was exactly what I wanted to use in my own bullet journal. And I made a few modifications along the way. Now, the way a Calendex works, if you ignore all of the color on this page and just focus on these little boxes with the numbers in them, each of these boxes represents an event or an appointment, and the number inside the box represents the page on which that event or appointment resides. So for example, today I go to March, March 10th, and I actually keep this little paper clip um, on my current day and I just slide it down as the month goes along. That way I can always just refer really quickly. But yeah, so I go to March 10th, which is today, and I go to page 94. And on page 94, you will see that I have all of these little colored in boxes. So I'm gonna look at 94, this box is blue. So I'm gonna look for a blue box so I actually have three of them. I'm gonna look for the one that says March 10th, which is today's date. And then I find that I have a doctor's appointment at 1.20 p.m. So that's how I know what that event represents. So when I went to create my daily page for today, I was able to reference my calendar, see that I had an event on page 94. Then I flipped to page 94 to find out what that event was and I wrote it in. So it's a great way to kind of plan out when you have future events and appointments coming up. I'm gonna show you one how I do it in real time as well here. I have a deadline for a guest post coming up on the 8th of April, and that is for my blog, and I know that my blog, Boho Berry, that is orange, so I'm gonna color code that in orange. So I'm just gonna create a new little box, and I just do this wherever I'm at on my daily page. So there's my orange box, and then I will write in the date of the appointment, and that is April 8th, and that is a guest post deadline. For pretty by post. All right, so there's the information about my event. Sorry for the awful handwriting. I'm writing at a very odd angle here. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip to my Calendex. I'm going to note the page number. I'm on page 124. And I'm going to flip to my Calendex and go to April 8th. And on April 8th, I'm going to create an orange box so that I know that it's a blog related activity. And then I am going to write in page number 124. So when that day comes, I will know that I need to look on page 124 to see what that event or appointment is. So that is how the Calendex works. Now I'm going to show you kind of my modifications and how I have adapted this system. And the big modification is I use a color code and this color code is the same one that I've been using on my monthly spread for months and months now. So I, I pretty much know it by heart. I know that green is birthdays, blue is for holidays, 
pink is for my daughter, orange is for my blog and business, blue is personal, purple is for my job with marketing creativity, and a green dollar sign is for paydays, mostly my husband's paydays, and then a yellow dot is for my sunshine and berries check-in that I have with Kim over at Tiny Ray of Sunshine every Friday. Anytime you see a dot on my Calendex, that is basically a repeating event. So I don't worry about marking a page number. I just know that, for example, if I see a green dot, I know that there's a birthday on that day. And then I'll just refer to my iCal calendar and check and see whose birthday it is on that day. And then whenever I see a yellow dot, I know that I'm having a meeting with Kim that day. And we always meet at the same time, so I don't need to worry about creating an event on a daily page. And then same with holidays. If there's a blue dot, I know that there's a holiday there. And if there's a green dollar sign, I know that that is a payday. So this is just one of my little adaptations to kind of prevent from having to rewrite repeating events over and over again. So anytime I see a dot, I know that that's a repeating event. And then I use those same colors across the board for my squares. So if I have something coming up that's a personal event or appointment, it goes in blue. If it's related to my blog, it goes in orange. If it's marketing creativity, it goes in purple. If I was to have anything else, I would color code that accordingly as well. Now, all of this being said, I absolutely love this spread. I love it to pieces, and I definitely intend to keep using the Calendex system. However, I realize that I really don't have many appointments or events that I plan out that far in advance. Really, in all honesty, I really only need about a four month view ahead of time. So what I did is I took my practice bullet journal, which is this Moleskine that I did in the Moleskine versus Leuchterm video, but I took this Moleskine and I decided to kind of create a practice spread and I created my own hybrid here. And what I did here is I actually kind of created a hybrid between the Calendex and the Alistair method. And the Alistair method is another one of the popular future log methods out there. If you're curious about all of the different methods of future planning in your bullet journal, I did write a whole blog post about five different methods of future planning. So you can check that out. I'll link that as well. Now, what I did here is I actually spread out. I did four months at a time for the Calendex. You can see here in this one, I have six months to a page and it, it feels a little cramped and there's only room for four appointments on each day if you go across. So what I wanted to do was make that four months and now I actually have room for anywhere between five and six appointments on each line or day. So that's a little more spread out. And then what I did is for the rest of the year, or the following six months, I decided to create this different future log. So this is based on the Alistair method. So I have a column here for each month, and then all I do is write out the dates, and if there's a time related, I would put that in as well, and what the event is, and I put a dot on the column of the month that it corresponds to. So when it comes time to create my new Calendex for the next four months, I can transfer these over if that makes sense. So this is a way to record my immediate future upcoming appointments and events for the next four months. And then beyond that, I have this simple log. I don't have to worry about putting everything in order. All I have to do is mark those little dots for each month that the event is occurring. So that just kind of gives you an idea of a different way to set this up to maybe work a little better for you. Of course, I don't have all my color coding. I didn't set up this whole thing because it was just an example of how I intend to do it in the future once I'm done with my current bullet journal. So this is how I'll be setting up my future log. I'll have a calendex and then a listed future log for anything beyond that four months. All right, so that is it. This is a short and sweet one this week, y'all. I'm going to have a companion blog post to this video that I'll link in the description box below, kind of detailing everything. I'll show you some close-up pictures if you want to get a better look at what's going on here. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts, and I'd love to have conversations with you all down there. So definitely comment away. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I will have weekly videos every Monday and Friday. 
On Mondays, I do a little mini tip series where I go in depth into certain spreads within my bullet journal. And then on Fridays, I usually have a broader, longer video about any given topic. Anyway, I'm super excited to be back this week. Again, leave your questions and comments in the comments below, and I'll see you soon. Bye!